What's up, you data friends? It's Yanis here, and welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to go over how you can use Python in order to call Binance API, pull some data in your local environment, run some analysis on that data by adding all these EMAs you see over here, and then create this Streamlit app from scratch. In this app, we can actually change the symbol interval and look back time. So over here, I'm just gonna say uh, XRP, for example, and then USDT, click enter, and then this is going to call Binance API, pull the data in, calculate all these EMAs we have over here, and then visualize the data in this app. And before we start this video, let me just say that this is actually video part two. In the first video, we went over into all of the functions that we are going to use into this app. And then in this video, we are going to put everything together in order to create the Streamlit app. So I'm not gonna be explaining the functions, I'm just gonna be explaining the Streamlit app part. And if you want to understand the functions too, then please go and watch the previous video that explains the function and then come back into this video. And before we start, let me just say that if you are passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right. Starting with the libraries we need, we are going to need Streamlit, Pandas, NumPy, Binance Client. If you don't have this installed, then please run pip install and then python-binance and then also restart the kernel so we make sure it works. And then coming back uh, again, we also need Plotly and then PIL in order to load the images. Right, the first thing we do is that we set our API key and secret that you are going to get from your Binance account. So copy it and paste it over here. Then we are going to initialize our Binance client by passing our key and our secret. Then we are going to have our first function that we have explained in the previous video. So what this function does is that it takes as input the symbol, the interval, and the loopback time, which are actually these inputs you see on the left-hand side, and then it returns a data frame with that data. Next, we have our add EMA function. Again, we have explained this before, but this function is basically calculating and adding the EMAs, so 20, 50, 100, and 200 into our initial data set. And the last function we have is actually the plot data with EMAs and is the function we have explained in the previous video that creates this candlestick chart you see over here. Uh, right, coming back down here. So now we're gonna start creating our Streamlit app. We are going to set the layout into a wide layout. So we use all the space. We are going to add a title in our sidebar called Binance Data, which is this uh, Binance Data sidebar you see over here. Then if I go back, we are adding our first image and we are printing our sidebar image. And this image is called Pick one and it's actually this image you see over here. Next, we are adding the three inputs we need to gather, which is basically the symbol and the default symbol is going to be BTC USDT. The interval and the options are these options you see over here and also the loopback time and the default is going to be one day. So all these text inputs and selection boxes are actually what we see over here. The symbol, the interval and the loopback time. Right, next we are adding our main image which is called peak 2 and it's actually this image you see at the top, this one over here. Next, if I go back, I am removing the extract space on top of that image. I'm not sure if this is working, but the first time I did this, I had a lot of extra space. So I added this custom CSS code in order to remove any of the empty spaces. And then we're gonna start running our functions. The first function is to get our historical K-lines, which is our first function, where is it? Over here. 
and the inputs now for this function, where is it? Uh, down here is going to be the symbol from our text input box is going to be the interval from this sidebar selection box over here and it's going to be the loopback time of this text input over here so when the user passes the data on the left hand side these are the inputs that our function is going to take in then we are running our second function which is adding the emas then we are adding a title and our title is Binance API analysis, which is this title you see over here. Then we are getting the prices in order to pass them into our cards. So the current price of the selected symbol is actually going to come from the close price dot ilog minus one and this is going to take the last price so the most up-to-date current price and it's going to repeat the same process for the 20 50 100 and 200 emas the reason we do this now is so we can pass all these values into these five cards you see over here at the top so if i go back uh, to add those i am first splitting my page into five columns so these five columns is going to be the five cards. And then I am saying with column one, I am adding some custom CSS code and all this code is basically changing the background color, the padding, the border radius, the text alignment, and also the font size and the font weight. And then I am just passing current price. I am setting it into six decimal places and I'm also adding the dollar sign. So this is the current price you see over here. If I go back, I repeat the same process for the rest of the four cards. So column two is going to be the 20 EMA, which is the 20 EMA as you see, column three, the 50 EMA, column four, the 100, and then column five, the 200 EMA. And if we check them quickly, if I go back and then zoom out, you can see we have our cards at the top. And the last thing we have to do is to plot our candlestick chart. And to do this, we are calling our function, which is the plot data with EMAs. I am passing my main data frame, and this is going to plot this candlestick bar you see over here. This chart is actually interactive, so you can actually zoom in by selecting, let's say, all of these and then zoom even further if you keep selecting the data like this. Right, going back now, uh, I did say a try, that's why I have an accept. Yeah, there we go, try, and then if anything fails, it's going to throw the error in the Streamlit app. Next now is that we have to deploy this app. However, we cannot do this here in the Jupyter Notebook. We're going to have to create a new .py file and then use Visual Studio Code in order to run that file and then deploy the app and open the app. To do this, we're going to need to create a new file and this is going to be a Python file and we are going to copy all of our data. So select all, copy, and then paste it into this new file. Make sure that you have your API key and secret pasted over here. And then you're going to need to do file, save all. So don't forget to save the file. Actually, let's rename the file first. So I'm going to say uh, Binance API underscore two. Click rename file, save all again. Now I need to copy and paste this file into the file location. I have everything else. So my pictures basically, so they use the same directory. In my case, uh, it's going to be in my C drive. So over here, here, uh, here, and then it should be somewhere here. Uh, where is it? Binance API 2. So I'm going to cut this and I'm going to paste it into the file location I need this to be. Uh, is actually this one, yeah, paste, there we go, Binance API 2. Now I'm gonna double click this, so I need to open this with Visual Studio Code. Something to be careful here is that you need to make sure that you open the whole folder, not just the file itself. Otherwise, it's gonna use a different directory and it's not gonna find the file when you are going to run the app. So my case is this Binance API over here and it's the whole folder as you can see. 
Next, I'm going to copy and paste quickly my API key and secret so we can actually run the app. I am going to edit that out. Right, I have added them in now and the last step now is to actually run this app. To do this, you're going to need to run Streamlit Run and then the name of the app. In our case, we have renamed it. So let me quickly get the new name. So copy this one and then it's going to be this name. Dot pi. So I'm going to copy this now. I'm going to run the Python file just to make sure it works. And then I'm going to create a new command prompt. And from this command prompt, I'm going to paste the Streamlit Run Binance API 2. Why did it not work? Uh, let me check. No, it's not working. Let me de delete all of these ones. Click run, uh, create, uh, sorry, click new command prompt. Paste it, there we go, it works. And this is going to open a new tab in your browser where you're gonna have your app. As you can see, it works fine. And now let's test it a bit. So I'm going to do uh, XRP USDT, click enter. Yeah, we can see it works. Let's test, for example, the 15 minute chart for the last uh, two days, click enter. There we go, you can see it works. Let's do like 10 days, for example, so we have more data. There you go. Uh, let's try and zoom in, for example, and see uh, if we can find an EMA that we can actually trade. Uh, this one does not look that nice. Let's try, for example, uh, ETH. Click Enter. Yeah, it's not great. Let's try the one hour chart. Yeah, this is a bit nicer. So you can see that the 20 EMA is kind of acting as a resistance. So what we can do is that every time the price touches the 20 EMA, we can add shorts on Ethereum. However, I don't recommend taking trades just on EMAs. EMAs is a tool you can use to get some insights. I think you should combine EMA analysis with other analysis that we're going to run later on in our channel before taking any trades. Right, so this is it for this video. I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. If you have any questions or any ideas, please let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'm going to see you in the next video.